I'm Justine Nolan and I'm the Director of the Australian Human Rights Institute based at the University of New South Wales in Sydney. I've been working in the field of business and human rights for about 25 years. First as a corporate lawyer, then an international human rights lawyer working in the United States, and now as an academic. My research at UNSW and our work at the Australian Human Rights Institute focuses on supply chain responsibility for human rights abuses and modern slavery. I work closely with NGOs, human rights defenders, business and governments to address the problems and I'm a member of the Australian Government's Expert Advisory Group on Modern Slavery. So let's talk a little bit about modern slavery, what it is, what's being done to tackle it, and what more needs to be done. It's a global goal to eradicate forced labour and modern slavery in human trafficking and eliminate the worst forms of child labour by 2030. As there are currently an estimated 40.3 million people enslaved around the world, that means around 10,000 people need to escape from slavery each day. This is a daunting challenge. In recent years, there's been a dramatic growth in public interest in modern slavery. Prominent figures such as the United Nations Secretary General and Pope Francis have committed to fight what they call this vile crime. Several countries around the world are ramping up efforts to address modern slavery. The United Kingdom has observed an anti-slavery day every year since 2010 and introduced its Modern Slavery Act in 2015, followed by a similar law in Australia in 2018. Modern slavery cases frequently appear in the news. The attention to modern slavery becomes apparent when examining the increased use of the term in English language newspapers across the globe by looking at journals, magazines, and in radio and television. Modern slavery, for example, was mentioned 41 times in 2000, 117 times in 2005, 420 times in 2010, 2,130 times in 2015, and it had increased to more than 6,000 times by 2018 and is on the rise. Despite increasing awareness about modern slavery, the numbers are increasing. During the 300 years of the transatlantic slave trade, around 12 and a half million people were enslaved in the Americas. Today, as I said, there's an estimated 40 million people are enslaved globally. That means that there are 5.4 victims of modern slavery for every 1,000 people in the world. 30.4 million in the Asia Pacific region, 9.1 million people in Africa, and one and a half million people in developed economies are trapped in modern slavery. Of those enslaved, the Global Slavery Index estimated that 16 million are exploited in the private economy working in global supply chains. 4.8 million are in forced sexual exploitation, and 4 million people are exploited by their governments. Evidently, slavery has not merely endured in these years, it has thrived. So what is modern slavery? Modern slavery is a non-legal umbrella term that refers to a range of abuses that exist on a continuum of exploitation. Reference to modern slavery commonly includes slavery, servitude, the worst forms of child labor, forced labor, human trafficking, debt bondage, deceptive recruiting for labor, and forced marriage. When we think of modern slavery in global supply chains, one of the more common practices is forced labor, which refers to work performed against people's will under the threat of punishment and may include bonded or indebted labor when individuals work to pay off a debt while losing control over their working conditions and those repayments. So whether it concerns men coerced into work in construction or on boats harvesting seafood, women being exploited picking cotton for garment supply chains, or children forced to work in mines, the term modern slavery describes the lives and labor of individuals under the oppressive and illegal control of their exploiters without alternative options available to them. The chains that hold humans today are more often psychological than they are physical. So as I said earlier, modern slavery should be viewed as part of this continuum of exploitation. Such an outlook recognizes that people can be exposed to working conditions that gradually worsen, sometimes leading to slavery or slavery-like conditions. There are clear indicators of what makes, make, what makes workers more vulnerable or falling victim to modern slavery. And the ILO has published guidance on this, which includes limited language skills and knowledge of rights, Gender, for example, women are vastly overrepresented in modern slavery, migration status, as well as factors such as financial hardship or a history of unemployment. So it's clear that modern slavery happens all over the globe and it's not restricted to countries in earlier stages of economic development. Thousands of workers in hand car washes across Britain are believed to be victims of modern slavery. Investigations have found issues ranging from wage theft to human trafficking and modern slavery. Similarly, one does not have to travel to Thailand to witness modern slavery in the fishing industry. Migrant workers on Irish trawlers have experienced exploitation, physical abuse and underpayment. For example, in 2018, Ireland was downgraded by the United States State Department 
in its annual report on countries' efforts to fight trafficking. In 2019, Ireland came to an agreement with the International Transport Workers Federation, a trade union, to grant migrant workers on Irish fishing ships additional protections. Similarly, fruit pickers in Australia have found to be subject to wide-ranging exploitation, including wage theft, sexual harassment and coercive control, leading to allegations of modern slavery. All these scenarios describe modern slavery and illustrate it that it can take on different forms. It becomes clear that exploitation does not always have to be premeditated or involve human trafficking and captivity, although it may. Rather, these scenarios illustrate the continuum of labour exploitation, the deterioration of labour standards and the absence of legal recourse resulting in workers being at the mercy of their employer and leaving them no option than to do what they are told. So what's being done to address this? And here we're going to particularly focus on modern slavery social disclosure laws. The business and human rights regulatory landscape has significantly changed in the last two decades. And you can see that there's an emerging mix of initiatives that are both legal and non-legal to address corporate human rights abuses. Some of these have a specific focus on modern slavery and forced labour. The modern slavery laws that are now emerging in places such as the United Kingdom, California and Australia are building on years of broader initiatives claiming to address the impacts of the rapid pace of globalisation and its negative effects on working conditions in supplier factories. Many of these early initiatives embodied strong elements of corporate self-regulation and relied heavily on corporate codes of conduct to regulate behaviour. These codes were often developed with limited stakeholder input and few if any included independent or transparent monitoring and reporting mechanisms to assess compliance with international standards. For too long, the impetus for change has depended solely on media attention. For example, in 2010, when employee suicides at Foxconn plants in China garnered significant attention, a number of major electronic companies came under scrutiny for working conditions in their supply chains in factories they neither owned or operated. Companies like Apple, HP, Dell, Motorola, Nintendo, Nokia and Sony were pushed to take a closer look at their workplace conditions. In 2009, Apple made debt bonded labour, which is a form of modern slavery, a core violation of its Apple supplier code of conduct and limited any recruitment fees paid by the worker to one month's wages. In 2015, to prevent workers being indentured labourers, Apple mandated that workers should not pay any recruitment fees to get a job, even if such fees were legal in the workers' country of origin. In Apple's Supplier Responsibility 2019 Progress Report, it reported that it required its suppliers to repay more than US $610,000 in recruitment fees to its supplier employees. But the problem is, this all depended on campaign advocacy and media attention. The action remained voluntary. But expectations are now changing. Increased public disclosure of human rights standards in corporate supply chains is quickly becoming an expectations of companies, and in some places, it's now not just expected, but required. What began primarily as a social expectation is slowly becoming a legal norm. Led by the development of legal social disclosure requirements in places such as the UK, the United States, in particular California, France, the Netherlands, Australia, and more recently Germany and Norway, Companies are now not only expected, but required to be more transparent about their working conditions in their supply chains. Some of these laws are specifically focused on transparency around modern slavery in supply chains. California's Transparency in Supply Chain Act was adopted in 2010 and came into effect in 2012. It was followed by the UK's Modern Slavery Act of 2015 and Australia's Modern Slavery Act of 2018. Each of these laws follows a basic model that requires companies to report on the risks of modern slavery in their supply chains. The California Act requires all retailers and manufacturers with global annual gross receipts of US $100 million or more that do business in California to disclose on their websites any action they're taking to eradicate slavery and human trafficking from its direct supply chain for tangible goods for sale. The required disclosure that would be posted on the company's website with a conspicuous and easily understood link to the required information on the website's homepage. While the California law does not impose a penalty on companies for not complying with the law, such laws can be the genesis for other legal actions, which we have seen in California. The UK Modern Slavery Act, passed into law in 2015, works on a similar model to the Californian law. It was the first national law to use the term modern slavery, and it gave it global resonance, 
The law defines modern slavery to include slavery, servitude and forced or compulsory labour and human trafficking. Section 54 of the Act requires any commercial organisation which supplies goods or services, carries on business in the UK and whose annual turnover is £36 million or more to produce an annual modern slavery statement on the steps they're taking to assess and manage the risk of slavery and human trafficking. In 2018, Australia passed its own modern slavery law and the Australian Modern Slavery Act applies to business entities, including companies, not-for-profit organisations, universities and the Australian Federal Government, based or operating in Australia with an annual consolidated revenue of at least Australian $100 million. These businesses are required to publish annual public statements, which are approved by their board, detailing the modern slavery risks in their operations and supply chains, and the actions they're taking to address and assess those risks and the effectiveness of their response. The Australian Modern Slavery Act is estimated to capture about 3,000 business entities, and it's the first modern slavery disclosure law in the world to impose reporting obligations on a national government and its agency. The Act improves on the UK law in that it includes mandatory reporting criteria and a central government repository to allow the modern slavery statements to be publicly accessible. Unfortunately, like the UK and California Acts, it does not include any real mechanisms for enforcing the law and does not include penalties, financial or otherwise, for non-compliance. Interestingly, like some of the, its corporate ca counterparts in the UK, um, in its submission to the Australian Senate inquiry in the establishment of the law, some companies, such as Nestle Australia, argued for stronger compliance provisions. Nestle noted that the absence of penalties will be counterproductive in the medium term and that penalties for failure to report should actually be a focus when the law is reviewed in three years' time. The assumption generally in these laws, known as social disclosure laws, is that the transparency gained from disclosure will incentivise corporate action to address human rights risks. But there are several problems with this assumption. Let's just highlight three. The first is that this assumption relies on meaningful disclosure, that is, verifiable information that allows the public to make an assessment of the company's efforts to eradicate slavery. In the corporate reporting to date in the UK, California, and early reports from Australia, many corporate reports are superficial and failing to substantively address modern slavery. They're focused on processes and policies and, not, and more on accountability, like what they're doing, not accountability for wrongdoing. Secondly, the social disclosure laws assume active participation of consumers as regulators of the law. That is, if we as consumers know that the fish we eat was harvested by slaves, then we will be less likely to buy it, which will force the company to change its practices. However, sole reliance on the ethical consumer to police corporate supply chains is always going to be insufficient. The tactic of consumer policing is generally restricted to those companies that are consumer facing or brand dependent. The accessibility of these statements is also heavily dependent on an under-resourced civil society, which is required to translate the statements so that they're readily digestible for the consumer. Third, the enforcement of all these laws is essentially outsourced to the market, as none of them incorporate a holistic compliance framework that provides government with a central role in enforcing the law. In fact, in 2021, the UK government has recognised this deficiency in the law and has announced that it plans to introduce fines for businesses that do not comply with their transparency obligations. But what is needed here is not just sanctions, but also incentives to encourage companies to imply. So even with refinements in modern slavery reporting regimes, they are inherently limited. They require companies to report rather than to act and attach only indirect liability for human rights abuses through failures in reporting. The assumption that greater transparency and availability of information about companies' activities will actually translate into both improvements in practice and increased corporate accountability remains a question. Whilst modern slavery disclosures may reveal that companies are adopting or refining policies and practices aimed at addressing modern slavery, it remains to be seen whether these changes in corporate behaviour will actually result in greater respect for worker rights on the factory floor. So the fact remains that revelations about modern slavery pose very uncomfortable truths for business and individuals. Regular revelations about modern slavery show that this practice can reach into every aspect of a company's operations and supply chains, as well as into consumers' lives through our daily consumption. Modern slavery in its various forms is not an abnormality that merely occurs at the fringes of society and in the dark corners of the economy,
or something that only takes place in impoverished regions, slowly perpetuated by shadowy figures. It is in fact connected to all of us. The global profits of modern slavery are substantial. Based on an estimate of 21 million people in modern slavery in the world in 2012, the International Labor Organization approximated that US $150 billion in illegal profits are generated in the private economy each year. Given that the estimations of people in modern slavery has nearly doubled since that time, associated profits will have drastically risen as well. While a growing number of companies profess to focus on modern slavery in their own operations and supply chains, there is a considerable gap between theory and practice. The business narrative to align people, planet and profits is now commonplace, but it's not always accompanied by meaningful action. Too few companies are walking the talk. Even after the introduction of modern slavery laws in some countries, the fight against modern slavery remains largely dependent on corporate volunteerism and self-regulation. We need laws that prioritise not only transparency, but also action and compliance. We need an understanding that corporate culture needs to change to ensure that procurement is based not only on price, but also on the recognition of workers' rights. And finally, we need to prioritise people and recognise all workers, wherever they are, deserve dignity.